Next, uh, let's start by exploring the network architecture in LTE. Um, by network architecture, we will uh, we will take a look into uh, what are the different elements that make the LTE uh, architecture perform way better than 3G and uh, other competing technologies. So LTE architecture is actually composed of two parts on a very high level. You have the Evolved Packet Core or EPC as it, re it is referred to. And then you have a radio access network which is referred to as RAN, also known as e EU-TRAN. And um, here EU-TRAN just stands for Evolved Universal Terrestrial Radio Access uh, Network. For short, uh, we're going to just call it RAN moving forward since it's easier uh, to understand. This refers to radio access network. So uh, this core part it usually is centralized. So this would be located in a central location, whereas a radio access network would be something that is more closer to the edge of a network and um, is not as central as the EPC. It's more distributed. We'll, we'll examine these in more detail in the following slides. Um, this diagram kind of adds a little more detail into EU-TRAN or RAN and the EPC. Um, here you have the EU-TRAN or the RAN part of the network uh, within this uh, red box. And then you have the EPC elements uh, within this red box. Uh, for now, we will just walk through what each of these um, elements within each of the boxes uh, are by just by the sake of their names. Uh, the functions for each of these servers or boxes, whatever you want to call them, um, would be discussed in a later slide. But just, just think of it like this, that in the EU trend you have something that's called as E node B. You can have one E node B or more than one E node B. You have a UE, which is a user equipment, which is in common terms your phone, smartphone, um, and it stands for user equipment. So UE is user equipment. Um, in the EPC world, you have uh, a network element which is called um, MME, uh, which stands for Mobility Management Entity. Uh, you have a home subscription server, which is uh, HSS. You have a serving gateway, which is... Uh, abbreviated as SGW and you have a packet gateway which is abbreviated as packet gateway. On a very high level you can think of as the EU TRAN being uh, closer to the edge of a network. EPC is more central and the EU TRAN communicates with the EPC which um, you know further communicates to your internet just in plain terms, right? Uh, so if you have a UE that is looking to watch, you know, that wants to watch a YouTube video, for example, right? So that UE would attach um, to your EU TRAN um, network, uh, E node B in this case, and that EU TRAN network is gonna connect to your EPC here, and the EPC connects to the internet and YouTube resides in the internet. So this is just on a very high level how a UE connects uh, to a service such as YouTube in the internet. Um, here you, you may notice there is uh, there are two kinds of uh, arrows here. There is a solid arrow and then there is a dotted um, or a, a broken arrow. Um, the, the solid arrow actually represents user plane and uh, the broken arrow represents control plane. And um, what we mean by control plane and user plane, um, uh, l let's let's spend a little time getting familiar with that. So, so what user plane means is re it refers to all the data that is meant for a user and is specific to an application. Say we were taking a look at um the application as youtube right so in this case all the all the data packets specific to youtube are part of the user plane 
Now you may ask, what is control plane? Well, control plane is essentially all the signaling that needs to happen before you can have user plane data um, either uh, delivered um, to the user equipment here or um, you know delivered to the EPC by the user equipment so you know in uplink or downlink so control plane essentially on a very high level means signaling user plane refers to uh, uh, data packets for an application okay so let's now focus on each of these elements that we had seen in the last slide in a little more detail so we had talked about the eu tran uh, part of the network architecture this is the the part that is in the green green uh, rectangle here and the element the key element network element that you need to take care or understand is the evolved node b which is abbreviated as e node b people who are coming from a background of uh, gsm umts you may be familiar with the uh, network element node b e node b is an evolved version uh, of that same node b so that's why they added a, an alphabet e uh, and made it e node b so e node b has the following responsibilities and let's walk through each of these um in a in a little detail uh, not in a very very uh, high detail or a low level detail because we are going to be adding a little more um, information in the following slides regarding each of these so the first critical re responsibility of a node b is the radio resource management so here you have a ue you know which is think of it as a smartphone it looks like a phone doesn't it so uh, you can have multiple ues within your eu tran network and um, the e node b serves all these ues so the the number of resources on an e node b are limited so it has to manage those resources in such a way that all the ues that are connected to a given e node b are um, get their data and you know get service so that that is what we mean by radio resource management uh, synchronization and interference control so this is another important aspect so uh, the, as i said there can be multiple ues within uh, eu tran network and uh, all these ues may be transmitting or receiving information at the same time right so there needs to be a very tight coordination between the E node B and the UE, the E node B and the UE, so that um, they they receive the data when it's expected and they transmit the data when uh, they are expected to. So that's why there is a there is a tight coordination, and that's what we mean by synchronization. Now, obviously, all these UEs are transmitting at the same time, right, or receiving at the same time. So there is bound to be interference and um, the e node b is a responsible for controlling this interference and it, and it does that in a variety of ways um, that are built into the eu tran uh, functionality um, so this is again a very critical aspect now one other function of the eu tran is mme selection among a mme pool so if you look at the epc here here um, there is a network element called mobility management entity um, here i'm only showing one mme but you can have within a big network you can have multiple mmes and it's the function of the eu tran to select a given mme out of all the mmes and it does that using some logic um, uh, that is pre-built into the e node b and is defined by 3GPP. Uh, another important aspect or function of the E node B is the routing of user plane data uh, from and to the SGW. So if you look here, the E node B has a connection uh, to the serving gateway. And if you recall from the previous slide, this is a solid arrow, meaning this is user plane traffic, right? So 
traffic for applications such as YouTube. So the eNode P has the responsibility of making sure that the data arrives from the SGW and is delivered to the UE if the data is coming towards the UE or if the UE is uploading, say, uploading uh, a post to Facebook, for example, then it's a responsibility the responsibility of the e node B to make sure that the data that comes from the UE gets to the serving gateway. So this is again a very critical function of the e node B. Uh, encryption and integrity protection of user data. So security is a big uh, aspect of LTE. LTE by design is very secure and the way they, uh, the 3GPP does that is by using encryption. So the e node B is responsible for encrypting data for, uh, for UEs that it is serving so that uh, no other UE uh, can, um, you know, can, um, can uh, comprehend messages uh, meant for some other UE. So this is, uh, this is really important. Integrity protection. So as I said, you know, you can have multiple UEs uh, within an EU TRAN and, um, and it has to make sure, the e node B has to make sure that uh, that data meant for a given UE reaches that particular UE, right? So that, that's what we mean by integrity. Um, so that's that's one of the functions of the e node B. Uh, the other important function is IP header compression. Um, what this means is in, in order to make the transmission of packets um, reliable uh, between uh, both network elements, um, the e node B does uh, some IP header compression to uh, decrease the amount of bandwidth that is needed um, to make the transmission more reliable. So 